In this video traders, let's look at the head and shoulders trading pattern. What is it, how does it form, and what's the trading strategy that can come after we've seen this pattern on the chart? Stay tuned. Hey guys, one welcome to you. All right, so head and shoulders is probably one of the more simple chart patterns out there. And whether you decide to trade it or not, or have it as part of your trading plan, are really is irrelevant because actually, you know, understanding and seeing this on your chart and seeing this on the chart as you're watching the markets you're watching can help you kind of categorize the, the feelings behind it, the flow, the supply demand, and really kind of understand what it means when you see it. So let's run through it now. And, and, and let me kind of uh, unpack a little bit how I perceive the head and shoulders. Okay, so it's called head and shoulders because really we've got uh, two shoulders and a head, basically. So we have the first shoulder put in, which is the first swing high. Then we have a second swing high put in, which is called the head. And then we have another third swing high put in, which is called the shoulder. And obviously it's called head and shoulders because it like, I guess it kind of looks like a, a head and shoulders. But anyway, that's the textbook definition for it. And if we're looking at an inverse head and shoulders, it's the same, but it's just flipped on its head. And you might wonder why that's sloping. We'll talk about that in a moment. And another thing I guess uh, is to point out is where the uh, kind of low meets, so the low of the shoulder, the low of the head, the low of the shoulder, that's called the neckline for obvious reasons. Okay, so head and shoulders. Now, let's, before we kind of look any more, uh, any more depth on this, just think about what's actually happening because I like to um, really think what's happening, why it's occurring, what the supply demand means when we're getting these patterns in the markets. And honestly, guys, I, I, you're going back on my career, almost 20 years now, at that point I spent far too long and she's just trying to chasing indicators and tools and all this nonsense. And when I started thinking in terms of supply demand and order flow and price action and this kind of stuff and thinking about who's on the other side of the trade, you know, so much more clarity to setups. Now, I'm not saying it's the only way to trade, but it's definitely something to think about. So let me kind of run through my thought process for this. So you've got the first shoulder and what we've got now is got demand coming in. We've got buyers stepping up, pushing the market up higher, normal market conditions. And it starts to dip down again, again, standard conditions. Now we have again, a push of buyers coming in. Now think about what's happening here. We had a normal kind of buy coming up, they put a high in. Now we have more buyers stepping in. And bear in mind, the neck being a support level is also indicative of strength because actually now we've had demand coming in, we had supply shutting off. Demand comes in, starts to push it through this high. That's a breakout type trade. And now we're making a nice fresh high on the top of that head. Now that is bullish. If you forget about this right shoulder, it's very bullish, just an uptrend, right? We've had support here, taking out the high, holding it highs, great. Now it starts to change sentiment a bit. Demand, a little bit of supply, much more demand. Now we have immediate aggressive supply saying, hey, this is great value. Um, this is worth selling into and buyers, are sh buyers may well shut off, but guys, you know, very basically supply demand, not necessarily buyers have to shut off, it's just much more sellers coming in, much more supply coming in. It doesn't matter how many of the buyers are, if they overwhelm them and they become more aggressive, they'll bid it lower and lower and lower and lower, but that's by the buy. Now from this point onwards, I guess we could say, because here's kind of reasonably normal uptrend, it starts to fail, and not only does it break down, but it breaks down through the high of that shoulder and starts to test that neckline. Now. It's not very, very weak yet because we haven't got a complete capitulation through. There's still some strength, there's still some buzz, there's still some demand. Comes up and we have this right shoulder put in here. Now this example is very symmetrical. In the real world, guys, you might have the shoulders higher than the other, but ultimately the, the, the kind of shape is still the same. The head is still the high, the highest peak. The shoulders might not be perfect, but you get that kind of shape. And now this is where it's a telltale sign because you have a scenario where, okay, supply, 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 stops, now demand comes in, oh, it's a bargain, but they can't get it back up to the head height. And that is indicative of weakness. If the buyers are stepping in, but they're shutting off for whatever reason they're there, or sellers are coming in against fresh supply coming at that point, rather than new highs, that's indicative of a, of a potential reversal. And so, as we come back down to here, we test the neckline, this is the sweet spot for the potential trade setup, right here, because We've had all this build up. We've had demand come in, we've had fresh highs. Now we've had not quite the continuation, but not only that, 
so from, from here on, we're reading weakness, weakness, weakness. Not only that, now we start to break through that neckline. And when we break through that neckline, that that's the textbook setup, we'll say you go short through the neckline and you put a stop above the shoulder or above the high of the head. And the theory is as well, is that you can extrapolate out the distance between the head and the neck. Let's imagine that's, uh, I don't know, 500 pips if, we, if we're talking about currencies. You can use that and extend that back down here and go, right, well, my target for the trade is gonna be 500 pips lower. So you're taking that, flipping it out, and so it's an easy way to have your target. And if you have your stop above the shoulder, hopefully that's only maybe 100 pips or so, you can get like a five to one risk reward ratio. So that's the theory behind it. You see the shoulder, you see the head, you see the shoulder, you're taking a break of that neckline and moving lower. Now, one thing I like to add, guys, is I think a better way to trade it is to wait for a pullback to the neckline. So rather than just setting the break, wait for this to pull back to the neckline, maybe find a little bit of resistance and then roll over because it just, you know, markets move in springs. Big stretch of a spring and that's come all the way down here. It's probably quite a big move that. Not to say it can't continue lower, often they do, but very often you'll get a pause a pullback because don't forget this is not this is a, a longer term reversal strategy imagine it's on a daily chart this isn't a momentum type dry flag type trade bear flag this is high new high lower high roll over it's not a one-way street and so expecting a rotation back up to the neckline is logical because it's a rotational type setup so waiting for that spring to come back but then still expecting supply to come in and kind of shorting it there for a continuation lower. Still using the same logic of the shoulder or this, but it just stops you getting caught out as well in, uh, you know, in ones that are, you know, because often if you get short here, it comes back to here, you might end up coming out of the trade. You might, it's just better, I think, a personal perspective, you might uh, disagree with me, please do, if you want to comment, guys, in the comment section below, waiting for that rotation back up to the neckline before the continued drive lower. And by the way, the inverse head and shoulders are exactly the same. You've got the shoulder, the, neck, the head, shoulder, inverse for obvious reasons. Now, the reason I've drawn this slanted is it doesn't have to be um, a, a complete parallel line to the x-axis. You can have a slanted neckline. And again, with the inverse or the normal, and the same rules apply. It just means it's a different type setup, slightly different setup. You've still got these kind of lower low, you know, higher low thing. And then when you break the neckline, that's when you're taking the trade. You just gotta be a little bit mindful when it's sloped so much that actually now what comes into play are these levels here. You know, the low, or sorry, the high of the shoulder uh, or high of, the, high of the kind of low point of the shoulder, and because it's not a complete uh, parallel to the x-axis, it might be a different type of trade, but that's still a legitimate head and shoulders. It's just slightly tilted. Now, if it's too much tilted, and I've done quite extreme there, to be honest with you, if it's too much tilted, it becomes more of like a channel break. So you've got to look at it objectively and kind of see where these things happen. But like all these chart patterns, guys, you know, make sure they're in the right context. If it's in the middle of no man's land, if you're having this and you've got a big range band environment, it's not worth taking. If you've got it and it's kind of driven up hard and it's a good, solid, longer term head and shoulders reversal pattern, this might be worth looking at. You can manage your risk with it. You can wait for the pullback. You can play around with it. Maybe you wait for a drive lower and a flag after this. Maybe you wait for the pullback to the neckline, like I say. Maybe you just take the break. Maybe you scale in half here, half here, half on a, uh, another three halves. Maybe you scale in a third. You get the idea, two halves on this, or maybe you scale in uh, three thirds. You can play around with this, but it's a good reversal type pattern that's worth having in your kind of playbook. Even if you don't trade it, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you don't trade it, just seeing this might be like, okay, well now I can put this stock or this market or this currency pair into my weak um, watch list. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to pull the trigger when it breaks the neckline, but you can go, you know what? It's worth watching this because it's shown some weakness. I think from now on, if I get some sort of setup to the downside after it's done this in this zone, I might go for it. All right, guys, take care. Keep the risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.